the Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. The Quran mentions in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, that we have created the human being from a quintessence of clay, then made it into a nutfa, a minute quantity of liquid, then made the nutfa into alaka, a leech-like substance, then made the alaka into mudga, that's a chewed-like lump, then made the mudga into ezama, bones, then clothed the bones with lahem, that is flesh, and then we made a different creature. Glory be to Allah, who is the best to create. These three verses of the Quran describe the various embryological stages, the initial stages of development of a human being in the mother's womb in great detail. The Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 12 to 14, it says, We have created the human beings from a quintessence of clay, then made it into a drop, placed it into karare makin, place of security, then made it into an alaka, something which clings, a leech-like substance, made that alaka into mudga, a chewed-like lump, made that mudga into izama, bones, then clothed the izama bones with lahem, that is flesh, and then made it into a creature. Blessed is he, the best to create. This verse of the Holy Quran from 12 to 14 of Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, describe the embryological stages in great detail. How could a desert Arab who knew nothing about science was so primitive that, for instance, they used to believe mountains to keep the sky up would come to such conclusions? I've read those sections of the Quran. I've read those sections of the Quran. I've read those sections of the Quran. Do, do you agree, disagree the with the stages of embryology? The Quran, uh, you know, the, yes. the seventh. Yes. So, yes. So you, let him yes. Say why, the let him Quran say why. Right, right. is babbling. It's throwing out these very sure. vague, fuzzy descriptions uh, that you know of, of the embryo looking like chewed flesh or whatever. When you look at what the Quran says about it, it is vague. It is ambiguous. Sure. It's just. It's the kind of stuff that a desert nomad might guess. Uh, the Koran is basically stealing from Greek embryology. Galen, yeah? Uh, well, I'm talking specifically about Aristotle. My yeah. point yeah. is that there's very little about embryology in the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What there, what there is. Details are not there. You're right. <laughs> Details are not there. You're right. <laughs> Details are not there. You're right. The Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. Details are not there, you're right. Yeah, That's the right. details are not and there. And what, what details are there yeah. are obviously cribbed from Aristotle. Like I say, when we look at the descriptions of embryology in the Quran, and we look at the descriptions of embryology in Aristotle, sure. they're the same. Well, in what way, sir? Would you like to give us well, the, I don't the, think the, the, date, the The discussion of the development of bones, etc., all these things, the, the, you know, the fairly crude uh, stages that are described in Aristotle, it, it's obvious. You, you may have a point there. I, I'm willing to accept that. What I'm saying is, I'm willing to accept that there may be similarities, not that Quran borrowed from Aristotle. Uh, my contention is that the, the specific stages described in the Quran, how does that um, um, uh, match with what Aristotle said? 
I mean, those stages are quite peculiar to the Quran. Quran is quite unique in describing those stages because the, stages the bones are formed first and then the muscles. And this is uh, how would a desert nomad know okay, that? Right now, I'm 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 laughing at this idea that this is a specific a specific description of embryology. Yes, bones develop first, then muscles. I agree, it's general. Yes. No, no, I agree what with you. General. The Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. I agree, it's general. Yes. No, no, I agree what with you. General. I, uh, Professor, this this, is, this is something Myers, that right? you can infer just by you know rational thought about embryology. You can also just determine this by looking at fetuses from different animals. You can look by at desecration. Once again, expanding you've, expanding you, you, you've equated expanding. these really crude, primitive guesses that you find in the Quran with the specific details of science. So the interesting thing is, we should maybe... No, it's not interesting. It's not, it's, it, you're, real, you're really boring me. That's what I'm telling you. That when, for instance, when we look at Aristotle's words, when we look at, at the descriptions of the Quran, we see a correspondence. Well, that you, is you haven't evidence. You have shown us any correspondence. Yeah, that's the point. That's a statement. You haven't shown us. It's just a statement. Aristotle is like the Quran. How? According to Surah 23, verses 12 to 14, the fetus develops into bones, which are subsequently clothed in flesh. This, too, is plagiarized straight out of Hellenic science, this time from Aristotle, who stated the following. Quote, Round about the bones, and attached to them by thin fibrous bands, grow the fleshy parts, for the sake of which the bones themselves exist. For just as an artist, when he is moulding an animal out of clay or other soft substance, takes first some solid body as a basis, and round this moulds the clay, so also has nature acted in fashioning the animal body out of flesh." Unquote. This may be why Joseph Needham, who compiled a comprehensive history of embryology in 1934, dismissed the Quran's meagre scraps of embryological information as nothing more than, quote, a 7th century echo of Aristotle and the Ayurveda, unquote. Clearly, Surah 22 verse 5 and Surah 23 verses 12 to 14 contain nothing more than a cursive and rather meagre rehash of Hellenic embryological science. There exists an even more likely source, however. Quote, Such medical knowledge as Muhammad possessed, he may well have acquired from Harith ibn Kalda, an Arab, who is said to have left the desert for a while and gone to Jundi Shapur to study medicine. On his return, Harith settled in Mecca and became the foremost physician of the Arabs of the desert. Whether he ever embraced Islam is uncertain, but this did not prevent the Prophet from sending his sick friends to consult him." Unquote. Arist I'm Aristotle, like Einstein, Aristotle <laughs> also describes the emergence of bones and muscle right. in sequence. Right. Okay. And it's like the Quran. And it's like the Quran. Which well, is does, it, does Aristotle say the bones come first and then the flesh and the muscles? Does he say that? Are you sure? That I'll, 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 I'll let you think about this. Well, if you, are you, are you, is that what you I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it. Can you, can you tell? Is, are that you what, sure? is that what the Quran specifically says? Absolutely. This is exactly what the Quran says. Absolutely. This is exactly what the Quran says. Absolutely. This is exactly what the Quran says. Chapter, then, chapter then 23. Because you just demonstrated the Quran is wrong. Yeah, but how? Because that's, that's, that's not what happens in well, the world. Well, this is what the embryologists are telling us. The this is exactly no, what the embryologist is telling us. No, they're not. I'm exactly no, what the embryologist is telling us. No, they're not. I'm exactly no, what the embryologist is telling us. No, they're not. I'm, okay. Embryologist, L let me tell you what Keith Moore said. I mean, you can disagree with him. He doesn't like Keith Moore. Uh, I, I don't know why, why you don't like What he said on the page number 364A of his book, The Human Embryo. Firstly, the page to which you refer was written not by Keith Moore, but by Abdul Majid Azadani. Any page in the book you refer to that ends with an alphabetic letter, page 364A, for example, is so. Furthermore, I actually contacted Keith Moore via his publisher, who told me that Muslims had taken his words out of context. that in the seventh week the bones are formed and immediately after that <laughs> the flesh is formed and the flesh the, the bones are clothed with flesh well, Keith Moore is wrong he's an embryologist this is this is his field 
it's my field too. I okay. know he's wrong. You're, you're an embryo embryologist? That, that, yes. <laughs> oh, great. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's news to me. That's news to me. That's news to me. That's news to me. Okay, so that's uh, that, that's wrong because what happens first is you have you have differentiation of mesoderm. Right. That within the mesoderm you have segregation into things like embryonic mesenchyme, and then you have these cartilaginous centers that will form bone. Right. And these are forming simultaneously with each other. Right. Simultaneously. So you, so yes. This is what I've been telling you. Sure. There are no embryological details of any consequence in the Koran. I've read those sections of the Koran. There are no embryological details of any consequence in the Koran. Well, the, 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 this, is, this is not the, stuff. The, the details are not there. You're right. You're right. De this the is details not are not there. The details are not there. You're right. You're right. De this the is details not are not stuff there. that requires a huge library to figure out. This requires a passing acquaintance with general knowledge about the primitive state of biology at the time. On the one hand, you are complaining that there's this detailed, wonderful science sure. in the Koran yes. that he could only have learned from, you know, revelation. Sure. And I'm saying that no, that what you find in the Koran is an extremely primitive science that was nothing more than the common man could have learned from, you know, general interactions with, with learned society at the time. I think the That's really sad thing here is that you're missing the enormous picture to focus on the pixel. Yes. I want you to think for a moment about the creator of the entire universe yeah. doesn't give a rat's ass whether you do anything good or bad in your life. All that matters, the sole criteria, is that you are gullible enough to follow the story of the least credible, illiterate proponent you can follow. That's the sole criteria, and that's all. No, that's not true. Okay, it's if that's things. not it, it then an space. unbeliever could be saved. An unbeliever would not go to yeah, hell. That's true. If all unbelievers go to hell, then the sole criteria is gullibility. In conclusion, it is saliently clear that Hamza Andreasortsis and Adnan Rashid are wrong, and that the Quran contains factually incorrect embryological information plagiarized from Hellenic science. It further follows that the Quran is an erroneous document, P.Z. Myers and Aaron Ra win, and the embryological miracle in the Quran is utterly refuted. Thank you for listening.